Hey everybody, this is Video Boy, and welcome to LibGDX Tutorial Part 9. So, today we're going to be adding bullets. So, it's simple enough, and uh, pretty much to get started, all we need to do is create a bullet class. So, a class is like a blueprint. Uh, first, let's create a package. So this will this package will be where we're gonna store all our entities. So we'll call it entities package. So a blueprint, uh, a class is like a blueprint that defines objects. So when you create a new object, so whenever you create a new bullet, it's going to be the same as all the other bullets, but it's going to have its own properties that can be different. They're gonna have the same kinds of properties, but the values of those properties can be different. All right, so let's call the class bullet. Okay, so first let's create a constant. This constant will be the speed of the bullet. This episode might be a little bit longer than usual, so I'm going to try to speed through it a little bit. I'll still explain stuff, but uh, it's going to be pretty quick. Okay, now we need to create the texture object. So we're going to make it static so that every bullet uses the same texture instead of uh, recreating the texture every time we create a bullet. It's much more efficient this way. Uh, and control shift O to import. Make sure you get the GDX one. Okay. And we keep we get two floats to keep track of the X and Y position of the bullet. We're also going to need to keep track of the screen, the game screen that's in. So main game screen, game screen. We're going to need that to, actually, we don't really need that. I messed up some stuff before. Uh, <laughs> because I actually code these things earlier in advance, so I have something uh, as a reference that I know works. Uh, but yeah, I forgot to remove some code. So forget the main game screen. Uh, now we have to create a public boolean called remove. Set that to false. Okay. So what this is going to do, since it's public, we can access it from outside of the class. And it's going to basically check if this object should be removed from the list. So you'll see later on uh, how that's going to work. So right now it's set to false, so we won't remove the object. But you'll see. It might not make sense right now, but you'll get it in a couple minutes. All right, let's create a constructor. So a constructor is basically like a method, but it's called when you create a new object. So this is when you create a new bullet. And you can actually put parameters here, just like with a method. So we're going to put float x, uh, float y, and that's it. So when we create a new bullet, we need to give it a default x and y value to start from. Actually, forget the y. The y will be predefined here. So this dot x is equal to x, and this dot y is equal to default y. We're going to create a new constant for that. And I believe it's set to 40. Let me check my code. Yep, it's meant to be 40. So basically when you create a new bullet, we pass an X value. So that X value is going to be where the ship is. Actually, let's just run the game. We don't have any bugs, so we should be able to run it. So when we create a bullet, we're, get, we're going to spawn it at this y value of 40. So it's going to be somewhere along this line here. But the x value is different depending on where the ship is. So if the ship's here, the x value should be here and here. If the ship's here, the x value should be there and there. So the x never changes when you shoot a bullet, but we need to have it defined at the start. Let's close that. OK, now we need to load the picture. So what we're going to do to do that, we're going to have an if statement, if texture is equal to null. So basically, if the texture was never loaded, 
then we assign texture to a new texture. All right, and then we put the path towards the file name for the image, which is bullet.png. This image is in our assets folder. If you go on the GitHub, it should be there right now. You can go check it out. Uh, bullet.png. It's just a green bullet. Yeah, I can probably load it up. It's a very small image. That's basically it. Very simple. We don't need anything complicated for that. Okay. And now we need to create two methods. So we need to create an update and a render method. So update is and render. Both of them are going to be called at the frame rate the game's running at. So it's probably like 60 frames per second or something. And the update is going to update the position. So it's going to make the bullets go up. And also it's going to make sure that the bullet doesn't leave the screen. Uh, well, when it leaves the screen, you want to make sure that you destroy the bullet. Also, eventually the update method is going to check if it collides with any enemies, but that's later on. And the render method is just simply going to draw the bullet. So let's start by creating the update one. So it's a void update, uh, void method. All right, we're going to need a delta time. Just to make sure the bullets all travel at the proper rate. Okay. So y plus equals, so we're adding to y so that it goes up. Speed times delta time. So now it's gonna go, it's gonna travel at 500 pixels per second. All right, let's create an if statement. So this if statement is gonna make sure that the bullet gets destroyed when it leaves the screen. So if the y coordinate of the bullet is more than the screen's height, which means it goes too high and it's not even in view anymore, we're going to set remove to true. So later we're going to create logic that will check if remove is true on the bullet and if it is it's going to remove it. But for now we're just telling uh, we're just saying that the bullet should be removed. Alright so that's basically it for update. Now let's create the render method. Very simple method as well. Alright we have to pass a sprite batch. So we can draw the image, and then we just do batch.draw. And we draw the texture, x, and the default y, we're going to set to, should be y. Alright, so there you go, now we have the bullet class. So now we can start creating bullets. So let's go back into the main game screen class. Uh, in here, there's only a few things you really need to change. So first, let's actually add the code to uh, create new bullets. So here, let's just comment a little bit, uh, movement code, and shooting code. So this code here is going to be for shooting. So the button we're going to use for shooting is spacebar. So if gdx.input.is key just pressed. So if the press person presses the spacebar, uh, we're going to shoot. All right. So if it's pressed, okay. We need to do uh, one quick thing first. So we need to create a list. So a list is basically like an array, kind of like with the roll, except uh, th the array has a max size. It's set to five, and you can't add more than five elements to an array because we said five only. But a list is dynamic. So you can add and remove objects from it and it doesn't have a limit. Uh, well, it, maybe it, it probably does have a limit but it's going to be way too high. We don't even have to think about it because it's, it's just so high up. So the array doesn't have a size predefined for it. I mean a list doesn't have a size predefined for it. So let's create an array list. There's different kinds of lists. Uh, in Java, the main ones are array list and linked list. We're just going to use array list just because, well, they're pretty much all the same. They have some differences if you guys want to Google them. But array list is simple enough for what we want to do. Okay. So we put these more than less than signs here to tell the list what kind of object is going to be stored in it. Okay, so we call the list bullets. Alright. So when we create the screen, we want to initialize the list, of course. 
So bullets is equal to new array list. So by default, the list will be empty and there won't be any bullets in it, but we're going to add some to it. All right, so now in our shooting code, we're going to add bullets to the list. So we do bullets dot add, and we're going to add a new bullet. And the only value you need to give to it is the x value. So it's going to be the ship's x plus 2. Should do plus 4. Okay, and then we add another bullet because the ship's going to be shooting two bullets at once. Dot add new bullet the ship's x plus the ship's width minus minus 4 minus, minus 4. Okay, so basically here we're just adding two new bullets to the bullet list. Uh, the first one is going to be at the ship's x coordinate plus four pixels, so about here. And the second one is going to be at the ship's x coordinate plus its width minus four pixels. So they should be symmetrical. One bullet will come from here, one will come from there. All right, so now we need to add the update code for the bullets and also the render code for the bullets. Okay, so we might as well put the update code for it here. Update bullets. So basically all we need to do is you create a for each statement. So a for each can be used for an array or a list and basically it loops through each one so you don't have to keep track of the iteration. So the syntax for that is bullet bullets, so we're telling it to loop through bullets inside the bullets list. So this loop is going to loop through each bullet and set it into bullet so that we can update it. So we can do bullet dot update and we pass the delta time. Okay, we now I need to create an if statement. So now we're going to remove it from the list. Oh, but first we need to do something. If here, I'll show you guys. If we just did bullet dot remove, so if the bullets remove property is true, and then we do bullets dot remove the current bullet. If we do this, we're going to get a concurrent modification exception. So basically this happens when you're looping through a list or an array but you're modifying the elements within the array and removing them and adding them. This is usually for lists, I think, uh, while it's updating through them. So this causes some bugs. So a good way to fix it that I use all the time is you create another list to keep track of which ones you want to remove and then you remove it after once you're done looping through the list. So again, it's another bullet list and we'll call it bullets to remove the new array list. We don't have to bother initializing it here or anything. It'll just be within the method. All right, and then here we just do bullets that remove all. So it's going to remove all that are also in this collection. Okay. Uh, so we need to do is bullets to remove dot add bullet. So if the bullet needs to be removed, we're going to add it to the list of bullets that should be removed. And then once it's done loop, looping through all of it, it's going to remove all the bullets from this list from that one. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, now they should be removed when they get out of the screen. And let's actually render them so we can actually see them in the game. So we should do that here. I'll put the rendering under the ship. So when the bullets are shot, they won't be over the ship. Because rendering happens... Um, uh, like in layers. Okay, so we do a for each loop just like before. So for each bullet in the bullets list, loop through it. And this is very easy. Bullet.render, you pass game.batch, just like here. And that should pretty much be all. So let's actually try the game out. Okay, so you move around, and if you press spacebar, there you go. 
that's basically all. So there are a couple of problems that we have right now with this code. The main problem is that if they have some sort of keyboard or mouse or something that allows them to press the button really fast, they can shoot bullets in like in a stream, just in lines. It'd be crazy. Actually, I'll show you guys what it would kind of look like. Uh, if we just do is key pressed. So the game's running at 60 FPS, they're going to be shooting 60 bullets every second. So it'd look like this if they had a, a keyboard that can press really quickly. So we obviously don't want that. So in next week's video, we're going to fix things a little bit. We're going to fix it so that people can't cheat like that. We're going to use a timer system, kind of like what we did the roll timer. And we're also going to make the bullets uh, work a little bit more like they should. Like as you can see in the game here, when we're rolling to the side and you shoot bullets, it looks kind of weird. Like here, I'll go like this. See, the bullet looks like it's not even coming from the ship. It looks like it's coming from nowhere. So we'll fix it so that depending on the roll, it'll shoot out of the ship properly. Anyways, that's basically it for this week's tutorial. Thank you guys so much for wa watching. If you enjoyed it and you learned something, please leave a like. And also, if you have friends who want to learn game development, share the series with them. Uh, it'll help the channel grow a lot. And if you're new, please subscribe. That also helps a lot. And I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.